Hello zoology people! Today I want to talk to you about the class Amphibia, the amphibians. Alright, so they're called amphibians because amphi means two, bia means life, amphibians have two lives. They are born underwater with gills, they go through a metamorphosis to have lungs as adults on land. So these are some really interesting characteristics to pay attention to. Also, a really big step in evolution. So amphibians, their ancestors are freshwater fish. And so amphibians, there's no such thing as a marine amphibian. They came from freshwater fish that walked on land. And so amphibians, because they're not that far removed from their ancestors, the fish, they still have aquatic eggs. So amphibians, all amphibians have to lay their eggs underwater. Now some of them have come up with some amazing strategies like laying their eggs inside a little pool of water in a flower and other sources, but they're all reliant on water in order to have their young. So let's talk about these amphibians. So amphibians need to stay moist, most of them, because they breathe through their skin. They have all of these capillaries that are connected to their skin and they need to create a moist mucus layer over their skin in order to help them breathe. They also have lungs, of course, that they breathe with, but most of them cannot dry out. They have to keep moist skin. So amphibians look for water. That's where they lay their eggs. The eggs hatch into a larvae form. You guys are probably familiar with the frog larvae form. We call it a tadpole but salamanders have those as well. And so you have this larvae form that then is fully aquatic, goes through a metamorphosis, becomes the adult with lungs, but they usually don't leave water. If you think of most frogs, they live near a pond and they live around water. So their whole lives revolve around water. Just as an adult, they have lungs so they can spend their time out of water if need be but they're still usually slaves to aquatic environments. They need to stay near the water. So let's talk about a couple classes of amphibians. The first one is called caudata. So caudal means tail. So caudata, these guys are the salamanders and the newts. These guys have a tail their entire lives. You can compare this to frogs where they have a tail as a tadpole and they lose their tail as an adult. So caudata, the salamanders and the newts, they also have a larvae form where they have gills hanging out of their neck. They go through this larvae form, they go through a metamorphosis, then they become an adult that can come out of the water and stay on land. But the majority of them still need to stay moist and the majority of them live in water. They swim around the water and that is where they live. And so those are the caudata, the salamanders and the newts. The next class is Anura. Anura are the frogs and toads. And so frogs, as you know, they go through the same thing where they lay their eggs in water. It hatches, it's a tadpole. The tadpoles have gills, they go through a metamorphosis and then they develop their legs, they lose their tail and then they become a full on frog. Now most frogs still have to stay next to the water. The difference between a frog and a toad. A lot of my students come up with weird things like a toad is larger than a frog and no that's not the case there are some very large frogs we have some huge bullfrogs and we have some really small toads the difference is a toad has dry skin and a frog has moist skin so toads you'll find them usually in forests or sometimes even in the desert. So toads have dry skin and they can go longer periods of time away from water. Now, just because you're a toad and you have dry skin does not mean that you still don't need water to reproduce. So toads will still have to lay their eggs in water, hatch into a tadpole, and then that'll go through the metamorphosis to become a full on toad. So that's the difference, dry skin and wet skin. So frogs are all over the world, but they usually are in areas that are moist or have lots of water and they don't do so well in the cold environment. So they're usually not too far north on our planet and not too far south on our planet, more towards the warmer and more moist environments, places where there's lots of rain. There's about 4,000 species of frogs and toads, 
but we're losing them all the time. Sometimes we lose a species a year, sometimes more than that, because frogs and toads are very susceptible to climate change and to pollution. Because they breathe through their skin, if the water toxicity or if the water acidity changes in any way, it can greatly affect their eggs, it can greatly affect their skin, and so, with pollution, we lose a lot of species of frogs. We have to be very careful if we want to preserve all of our species of frogs. We have to really pay attention to the damages that we're doing to our planet with pollution and, of course, climate change. It is greatly affecting the amphibians. There's about 400 species of salamanders and newts. And so comparison, 400 salamanders and newts, about 4,000 species of frogs and toads. Well. I hope you like this introduction about amphibians, so the class Amphibia, and I will see you next time.